Hello music fans, you're watching What's New 2024 on the Death by Unicorn YouTube channel, the channel where we talk about metal, rock, and prog music. And on this show, we talk about new releases that came out over the past week. I give my first impressions on them, and I'll talk about them in my order of preference, starting with Era and their album Cure. This is the sixth album by this band from the U.S. It's progressive melodic metalcore. Has a lot of the gent style guitar playing, some industrial influences. Everything I've heard from Era has been excellent, but I'm not sure if they've ever made any album that I would call a masterpiece or even a near masterpiece. So this goes in my excellent tier. I was hoping this would be the one where they would take their sound to the next level and bring in more variety and experimentation. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case, but don't get me wrong, this is still an excellent album. While they've got a pretty straightforward formula and sound, a very kind of melodic metalcore with genty rhythms, it's very expertly done. And if you're a fan of a band like Monuments, uh, those kind of genty prog metal metalcore bands that have both harsh and clean vocals and really catchy, clean vocal hooks, then I think you'll like this album by Era called Cure. Next up, I've got Simakia and their album Project 11, The Landing. This also came out on April 5th. And I contemplated putting this above Era's Cure, and maybe over time uh, it will, because it's a bit more interesting. This is the second album by this band from France. It's progressive metal but it's kind of got some symphonic influences to it maybe even some like power metal and traditional heavy metal i never listened to an album by this band simakia before but uh, i heard the early release single lunar obsession that sounded cool so i checked out the whole album i think if you're a fan of fate's warning you'll like this it also sounds kind of like a more technical version of Queensryche. It has that late 1980s prog metal sound with a heavy and almost power metal vocal style, very intense operatic vocals for fans of Jeff Tate and Bruce Dickinson. And next up I have Vampire Weekend. Well, that Samakia one is also in my excellent tier. Now we're moving to my very good here with Vampire Weekend and Only God Was Above Us. This is the fifth album by this band from the US and this is more indie rock with pop influences. And I liked the last album by Vampire Weekend, Father of the Bride. I also like the single I heard from their new album uh, called Capricorn. But I've never really loved anything Vampire Weekend has put out. I've kind of, I was hoping to be blown away a bit more after listening. I think this is very good, but doesn't quite cross my line up into excellent tier. There are some great songs here like Capricorn, which is possibly my favorite on first listen, uh, connect Gen X cops and Pravda, which are also great songs, but it's pretty, uh, pretty typical indie pop, uh, rock compositions, but really good production and performances by everybody on the tracks. Next up, I'm moving to my good tier now with Hawkwind and their album Stories from Time and Space. This is the 36th album for this band from the UK. They've put out a lot of music. It's psychedelic progressive space rock. It's got some hard rock influences. And I thought their last two albums were good as well but not quite good enough to make my very good tier so i put all three of the last the last three albums that i um that are fresh in my memory in the good tier uh, but i respect that this band has been going for so long i think they started way back in like the 60s uh, and they had lemmy of motorhead in the band for a while they put out so much music so i was just curious to hear how good this one would be and I don't think this new one is as good as their last two, but I do still think it's good and almost on par with them. But it just sounded too much like jamming and improvisation for my taste. Not enough uh, 
creative spark and interesting composition for me to be grabbed by. Next up, also in my good tier, I have Dustin Kendrew with his album Desert Dreaming. This is the fifth album by this American artist. It's folk rock with country, alternative, and indie rock influences. It's not really my style of music, but I checked it out because I love his post-hardcore and alternative rock band Thrice, where Dustin Kendrew is the lead vocalist and rhythm guitarist. I think he's a great singer and songwriter, so I wanted to check out his solo album. I did like the song Western Skies, I like The Light of the Moon, and I like Death Valley Honeymoon. I think there's some good songs in here, but generally I'm just not a fan of this folk rock country style of music, and there wasn't anything that really excited me on here. And lastly, I want to talk about Toe Hider and their EP, Stereo Night Ash, Music for Relaxation, Meditation, Decastrophizing, and Deep Sleep. A long title. It's uh, an EP by this Australian artist who's very, he's a very eclectic artist who makes music in a lot of different styles, but mainly progressive metal and progressive rock. But this one is different from everything he's done before. This is more of an ambient electronic album with spoken word story over top. And this is the eighth EP in his latest 12 EPs and 12 month series. For this, I'm just going to put it in my average tier. Yeah, I wouldn't quite call it good. It didn't, it, it would be an okay ambient meditative album to fall asleep to, but I don't even think it works for that because the spoken word story sounds just a bit too silly to me. I think it would be distracting and make it hard for me to fall asleep to this music. So I'm not sure if the intention of this music is to fall asleep to. If it is, I don't think it would work well. I don't think it's even that good to meditate to because I think you get distracted by the story. But it's also not the greatest thing to actively engage in listening to. So it's kind of somewhere in the middle, which makes it this weird thing where it's not quite meditative music, but also not quite composed music to focus on. Instead, it sounds a bit like a whispered audiobook with some decent ambient electronic soundscapes behind it. Um, but definitely not the best music to fall asleep to. I think there's better stuff. I really like uh, Devin Townsend's Dream Piece project for uh, sleep music, which I think does this idea a lot better, um, but also not really something I want to actively engage in listening to either. It almost sounds like a parody of relaxing meditative sleep ambient music by Toe Hider. Uh, worth checking out once if you're a fan of Toe Hider just to see uh, this side of Michael Mills and his ability to compose something like this. But for me, I don't think I'm going to return to this Stereo Night Ash uh, relaxation, meditation, decastrophizing, and deep sleep ambient electronic album. Um, but that's it for my thoughts on these six albums that I listened to that came out over the past week. Let me know what you think of these albums down below in the comments. And let me know if there's anything else that came out recently that you think I'd enjoy. And stay tuned for next time. Peace out.